I'm Nick Hanashevsky. As a professional saltwater fishing journalist, I've explored the world's wildest fishing destinations. Now, I'm bringing you there, into the saltwater underground. A gut-wrenching, knock-down, drag-out battle with a freight train. That's how Northeast tuna fishing is often described. From May through December in New Jersey, Bluefin, Yellowfin, and Big Eye Tuna Schools put anglers' gear and willpower to the test around the clock. Fish average 40 to 200 pounds but can run up to and pass the 800-pound mark as they voraciously feed throughout the daytime and nighttime hours. Tuna fishing is not for the faint of heart. You need to steal up your nerves for long runs and pumps of pure adrenaline, but the rewards can be, well, let's just say they can be memorable. Tuna reports have been ballistic at the offshore canyon grounds. I'm setting out to try tuna fishing two ways, fishing both the day shift and the night shifts to prove a tuna feed around the clock. When tuna fishing far offshore, you need to tilt the scale to your advantage and harness the variables you can control. That starts out with heading to Fisherman Supply in Point Pleasant to get the latest intel and to grab the right assortment of jigging, trolling, and chunking tackle. An arsenal of Savage Gear lures, Ron Z soft baits, Shimano jigs, and Chatter Lure spreader bars are the ingredients needed on my outing to tempt tuna. All right, here we are, mid-August right now, up at the ungodly hour of like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning because we got the call from my buddy Driscoll that the tuna fish, the yellowfin and bluefin, are biting right now. we got to make a run about 75, 80 miles offshore, hopefully go jigging, popping, trolling, find some of these tuna to bring home for the grill. Dream team together. Oh, what's, up, dude? <laughs> what's up, boys? Shawnee. We got Shawnee, Kyle, and Driscoll all on board, ready to go. All right, Driscoll, we just got out here to the Bacardi right now, about 65, 70 miles off. What are we looking for out here? What like what what's gonna make you make the decision to fish? Uh, we're looking for any sort of life, so so mammals, whether it's whales, porpoises, um, and then chick, you know, birds, whether it's shearwaters or chick birds, you right. know, because because out here life attracts life, so right, right. find some life and you know you work it. No, I think it mimics those mackerel and the big baits pretty well. I'm on the bait on the bottom. All right, Sean's dropping the Ronzi down. Wow, look at that. Oh. <laughs> those yellowfin and the bluefin are following those whales like that. Right behind them. You want to make that cast right behind them. Look at that. Unreal. I'm trying to keep them out of the lower unit. Ah, shit. I think it's an Albi. That's an Albi. Look at the size of this thing, dude. <laughs> Albie, whack this thing, dude. You size it, I think. <laughs> Big albacore. That's not the species we're looking for, but if he's around, there's got to be a few more uh, yellowfin or bluefin around, too. So all we're doing is throwing these Savage Gear jigs down and some Shimano Butterfly jigs and bent those, too. But, Little false albacore. Man, he put up a fight. I thought he was a little blue fish. Put him back in. Just a school of hundreds of them right down there just moving up. Oh, yeah! Oh, let's go! Good. 
Small could be. But I'm feeling Albie. Alright, we'll see. Okay. There he is. <laughs> Yellow fin baby. Nice work, dude. That's Woo! it. Woo! Right, got him on, on the go. Let's go. Keep jigging up there. Beautiful yellowfin tuna, man. Yeah. Look at that sweetness, dude. Nice. That's what we're looking for. A little one. A little one and up for you for the for the grill, getting some sushi. Shawnee, keep jigging. Kyle, keep jigging. That's the first one. Look at this beautiful fish. Unbelievable. Nice little yellowfin. But uh, right that's what it looks like right now. Yep, right under the rays. We're following the rays. That, that, chatter, that chatter jig got him. Yeah, he's got the chatter jig. Share that thing, dude. That's crazy. Nice little pink chatter jig. Yep. Now we're talking, boys. Time to get back in the game. Let's jig under these rays and follow them. Look awesome. Driscoll got the first yellowfin tuna. Take that at 29 inches. Got to be 27 inch minimum. We got some sushi. We went out 65, 75 miles. Got ourselves a yellowfin, a couple albacore. Went in, got some mahi. We had a good day today, but on to the next trip with the crew. Shawnee, Kyle, and Christian. Woo! Let's go. We got a taste of the daytime tuna bite with Driscoll and his crew, but I'm hearing the night bite is going off. It's time to hit the night shift. Saltwater Underground with the Nick Konashevsky is brought to you by at Nick Konashevsky on Instagram. Savage Gear, Bubba Blade, Shimano, Grundins, Grumpy's Tackle, Fisherman Supply, Ron Z Lures, and Chatter Lures. Saltwater Underground with the Nick Konashevsky is brought to you by at Nick Konashevsky on Instagram. Savage Gear, Bubba Blade, Shimano, Grundins, Grumpy's Tackle, Fisherman Supply, Ron Z Lures, and Chatter Lures. All right, this is going to be insane. I just got the call uh, from my buddy Captain Alan Lee of the Machine here in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. It's 10 o'clock p.m. in uh, October 11th, I think the day is, and uh, the, the tuna bite at the canyons is going absolutely bananas right now, so I don't know what to expect, but uh, we got to see if we can catch all these 60 to 80 pound yellowfin tuna that are happening right now. <laughs> I don't know what to expect, but apparently I'm not sleeping tonight, so let's meet up with Captain Allen and get this show on the road. <laughs> All right, Captain hey, Allen. Nick. How are <laughs> What's you, man? up, big man? All right, good, good to see you. you. Yeah, good man. you. Man, after your call last night, uh, I think we're gonna hopefully go see if we can find some of these yellowfin out there at the at the canyon, right? Yep, we're gonna yeah. look for them. If, How'd you guys do last night? Yes, sir. We smoked them. We really? smoked them. If we had even a quarter today, if we had a quarter of what we had yesterday, it'd be great. Oh my you know? gosh! When you called me, I was yeah. like, I was like, we gotta like drop everything yeah. after like fishing all day today and be like, let's all go right back yeah. out there and hit the canyon. So opportunity knocks. Yeah. You know? Mainly yellowfin, I guess you're hearing yeah. tonight. Yeah. Well, there was a couple of big I caught yesterday, but most of what we'll probably be targeting is yellowfin. Okay. Good quality yellowfin too. Mixed sizes, but some up to 90 pounds. Oh, that's some real real brutes. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's get going because we already right. waited too long. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get Cool. It. Let's go. So basically, you know, now that we're going to be setting up here, uh, what's the game plan again? So we're going to be hitting like jigs first or chunking with butterfish? What's happening? So uh, we've got the mates throwing chunks of butterfish and that's going to give some scent and some sight to try to attract the tuna in. Right. And we're going to work some bait lines, uh, whether that be with butterfish, sardines, squid, all different kinds of baits. We'll be presenting them at different depths okay. by using different size weights. Okay. Some of them will be free line, so they'll be having no weight on them. 
Some might have two ounces, four ounces, eight ounces to get the baits to different depths. Right. As you work them back, the, the tuna pick up the scent of the, right. the slick and they'll be coming up the that's, slick. That's the whole idea is that like basically when we're chunking the butterfish out there, the tuna, the yellowfin, bluefin, maybe even a few big eye or something like that, we'll be smelling that bait coming up, uh, following that scent line, and then we like kind of bring them like a uh, but cows to the trough, I guess, yeah, or something exactly. like that, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. And then, let me ask you this, too. As soon as, like, you know, we're basically, you know, putting the butterfish chunk baits out, right. can we get them on jigs, too, tonight, you think, or what? Yeah, you know, especially um, as thick of they, as, as they've been in the last few nights, right. we should be able to get some on the jigs and okay. some soft tails and things like that. Sort oh, that's great. We'll throw some Ronzi's down, maybe throw some Shimano butterflies down, see what we can find. Absolutely. That seems to be the plan. Well, uh... Looks like Daryl and John got the slick going, so yeah. <laughs> let's see what comes it. up, man. All right. All right, so we're putting the butterfish baits down right now. And Daryl, tell us what you're doing here exactly. So right now, I have a two ounce sinker on, like six feet of floor car with a five ounce circle hook. And uh, we're just feeding it out about three foot poles at a time while I'm holding the line. And I'm, I'm trying to feel for a pickup. When the fish bites, you'll feel bump, bump. And I'll take it right out of your hands. Then I'm gonna engage it real easy. Push it up to strike. Right. The circle hook's gonna do its job. It's gonna hook itself. The rod will bend over. You just pick it up and start winding. The you got key, fish on. The key to what you're doing too is like you want to have that slack in the line so the hook bait is going out at the same, uh, you know, speed as the current. Yeah, same yep. speed as exactly. the chum bait's going, so it looks natural in the current. Daryl just passed me the line to start working. Throwing the. Uh, Butterfish bait out there right now, let it sink at the desired rate with the rest of the chum. Wait for a tuna to come pick it up, zing it off. There you go, smaller fish. Small fish. All right, here we go. Leader. Got color? Yeah, I heard it come off. You might make another run, so just be patient with them. Might have to snap that sinker down. Slide it down. Slide it down the swim. There, there you go. You're good. Yep. Yeah. 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 There he is. Woo! All, All right. right. Nice job, First man. First yellow on deck. All right. Finally. Woo! <laughs> nice work. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. All right. There good job, is. guys. There's the first yellow fin on deck. There we go. First yellow fin on deck on the chunk. Butterfish on the motion. Oh man, here we go. Time to, uh, we got one coming now, so there should be a bunch more feeding in the slick. So let's get it going on. <laughs> All right, one on board, more to come. Let's see. So guys, one of the tricks to tuna fishing is to hide the hook in the bait because they have such keen eyesight. So the technique that we use is you take your hook, you go in the fish's mouth, the butterfish, to be precise. Hold on a second, let me get that in there. Wiggle that around. Get the hook in his mouth and out his gill, pull it through, reinsert the hook back inside the gill cavity and rotate it inside. So the hook disappears and then you pull your leader out straight and now the hook is completely gone. When the fish bites and runs, it'll rip right through it, hence the name Butterfish, it's soft and it'll get right hooked right into his jaw. That's it. That's how you rig them up, guys. Johnny, it's on. You do a yeah. big yeah. one. Ah. Look at the real thing, dude. Look at the real yeah, boy. Woo. Yeah, woo. There you go, Johnny. Got to clear the lines right now. Make sure Johnny works that fish. Get some around the boat, get some in. There we go, nice stick, nice stick. John boy, get it on. Even the mates on the motion get some fish, too. Nice work, boys. That's what I'm talking about.
All right, let's get more lines in the water. There's gotta be more fish here that they're all feeding through this flick right now. So Daryl, yesterday you said you were you're seeing them actually in the slick when you were jigging, or was it just like blind jigging? Uh, we could visibly see about 50 fish cruising all around the boat in our slick, and then, <laughs> yeah, just hooking up at will. Unreal. Yeah, it's great. The baits are soft in the warm water. They run a little yeah, nibble, yeah. gone. There you go, there you go. Fish on, fish on. Push right, push right, push right. He's there. He's just circle, real, circle, real. circle. Real. Nice, Sean is on, Sean is on. Keep on him, brother, you got him. Double. Woo! <laughs> starting to burn. Real yeah, burning drag on. now, man. Woo! Get close. I don't feel either yet. Okay. And then with tuna fishing, once they start getting close, you feel the leader. And then when the angler sees color, you can actually see like the tuna flashing down there. You say, oh, I see color, I see color. So when the gaff man gets ready to stick them. Here we go. Got leader now. Okay. <laughs> Another one in the boat. <laughs> Another yellow bird in the boat. Nice work, Sean. Right, worked it up, boss. Worked it up. There we go. See how like the butterfish circle hook goes right into the perfect hook set into that mouth. That's uh, how you avoid gut hooked fish. You can fight the fish all the way through. Lines are starting to go off. I got to drop some jigs and see what we can make happen here. Uh, I'm not doing anything. You never stop working on the tuna boat, man. One guy's banged up. Sean's releasing his fish. I'm grabbing jigs. Sean's got to throw ladles now. Nice again. Nice yeah. stick. Nice stick. Yeah, Daryl. Yeah. Nice stick by Daryl, baby. Woo! Another one. There we go. Back to back to back to back. Here we go. That one ate Yellow it out of my hand. I was really? letting it out. I was letting it out and picked it up right there. <laughs> That's some chunking gets good. He's hard to ask. You hear the turn of tails tapping in the cooler. We got more on right here. Woo! You got the phone? You got the phone? Another one in the box. There go, man. <laughs> That's a nice one. There we go. Another beauty in the oh, box. Nice work, Dale. Yeah. Woo. With motion, crushing it. That's how we do it over here. Nice one. Another beautiful fish, man. Good eating yellowfin tuna. Ones that aren't, these things maybe 25, 30 yeah. pounds. Not huge. There's bigger ones out here, but these are the perfect eating size and perfect fighting size. Gotta love it. Unbelievable. Saltwater Underground with Nick Konoshevsky is brought to you by at Nick Konoshevsky on Instagram. Savage Gear, Bubba Blade, Shimano, Grundins, Grumpy's Tackle, Fisherman Supply, Ron Z Lures, and Chatter Lures. So, John, when you're doing a chum, like throwing out the chum, there's kind of like a technique to chumming, right? Or what? Definitely, How do you want yeah. to do it? You want to get a nice spray. Just distribute them right nice and evenly so they float under the boat right, right where our baits are if you throw right. them up forward or behind the boat tuna will be back there and they won't even see our bait right you don't want it all clumped up watch this spray oh there it goes the whole big spray so that gives a whole wide net where all the chunks are sinking all at once like this down that way whereas if you throw like a whole like ball of them in one them area over. it ain't gonna work you know so Get that hole spread out and you open up this whole big fan where all these tuna can smell it and come on in and feed. There's a technique to chunking. <laughs> get them. Ryan, get them on there. Here he is. Here he is. Hang on. Hey, Ryan. Ryan, you get on the camera. Get on the rod. Get on the rod. Just hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Stay calm. Just hold it. Okay, real. There we go. You got him? You got him too? You got to go along. Remember, just down the bottom. Oh! Oh! Yeah, go. oh! 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 Oh!
my man Ryan Samal Chick Numbskull's first tuna. Woo -hoo -hoo! Yeah, man. Love it, dude. Oh, man, that's right. Chris, we gotta go get some pork roig and cheese at the dock. That's right. <laughs> so nice. we're gonna wrap it up right now, but... Daryl, John, man. Thanks, they Crush it, dude. We got some nice Thanks. tuna, brother. Great day. Captain right. Alan Lee up there. Woo! Crushing it, brother. Great trip. Yes. Great time. Thanks nice a time. ton. So another great trip at the Jersey Canyons at the Hudson on the Mooshine. And uh, here we go. Time to make some sushi and sashimi and some steaks. Wait till we see what's coming up next. Right, I'm headed back here to my scenic hometown of Clinton, New Jersey in Hunterdon County and I'm meeting up with my old childhood buddy, Chef Josh DeKellis, who's a celebrity pro chef. He's got his own place here at Juniper Hill and uh, we're going to see what kind of magic he's going to make with this tuna. Sure. Yeah, there he is. Welcome home. Good to see you, man. Nice Glad to see you, dude. Let's go. You got to uh, want to cook us up this tuna and see what you can. What We're gonna do a magic. little, little cooking, a little slicing. Let's get to it. Pal. All right, let's roll, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm literally speechless how good this is. And it's not just for TV, man. This is absolutely to yes. die for, man. Yes. I'm not even kidding, brother. Yes, that so, makes me so happy. Oh, man. So let's lay this all out and show us what we got at the end here. All right. This is unreal. So we got the three ways to make tuna. And this is the coolest thing is anybody can do this. So anybody. we got the tamaki rolls, the sashimi, and finally at the end, the blackened tuna here. Let me ask you a question too. So there's three different types of tuna. We got their yellow fin, the blue fin, and the big eye tuna. Now, are there certain applications or meals that work better with certain tunas? You know, that's a really good question. Uh, blue fin by far is the king of the tunas. Okay. Uh, the size is one thing. So the loins are huge, but really any blue fin, no matter if it's a 60 pound fish or a 600 pound fish, it has a flavor that's very unique and it's the most prized tuna in the world uh, and it goes for tons and tons of money. Right. Uh, that to me is all about sashimi, but I mean nothing's going to be bad. <laughs> but the flavor of bluefin is incredible. Yellowfin, also called ahi tuna, is probably the most, it's definitely the mildest tuna. It's kind of like the tuna for beginners. Right, right. You know, we can really enjoy that texture, mm -hmm. but it's got very little flavor. The bluefin's got a strong flavor and it's delicious. Ahi, no flavor, still delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, and Big Eye's right in between. To yeah. me, Big Eye carries like a little bit of flavor. It has, in my opinion, a little bit of a softer texture, usually next to, to Yellowfin, even at their freshest, uh, but a little bit more flavor. I'll tell you what, well, the way that you prepare this at Juniper Hill here, man, it's uh, everything is, is excellent and over the top. So well, awesome, man. Appreciate it, brother. Let's get to eating right now, dude. <laughs> Thanks. Ask anyone who's ever come back from a tuna trip what it is that they feel, whether it's their first time or their thousandth time. The answer is always the same. It's like nothing they've ever experienced. A true magical marine ecosystem unfolds, saved only for the eyes of brave and wandering souls who venture offshore to chase tuna. It's not all about landing giant fish that makes the ultimate catch, because hooking up with any size tuna will change you for the better as you test your limits of your endurance and spirit on all levels. Tuna fishing may leave you with sore arms and busted tackle, but the trade-off is unbeatable with a wide smile stamped on your face, fresh steaks for the dinner table, and a tuna tail to tell for years to come. Is that the lucky tuna shirt? What? Yeah, dude, tuna. 
Up, Ace Baby Clinton. Woo!